thanks for joining everybody. So we are here to talk to you about enabling metaverse commerce for brands. I am Holly. I'm head of metaverse tech at Boson Protocol. And I'm a blockchain dev with a career history in commercial roles. Yeah, I'm um, Jonas, head of strategy at Boson and previously worked at uh, Luxo pretty early on. And today, I'm just going to tell you a bit more about the problem we're solving, um, how we're solving it, and then Holly is going to dive deep into uh, metaverse commerce and how we enable brands to build great experiences there. <clears throat> so fundamentally, um, going about what we solve um, and what we do at Boson is um, to give some context, we see in kind of the smart contract blockchain space um, two major Oracle problems. The one is quite one is quite well known, which is the, the data Oracle problem. Um, smart contract tracks just can't um, trust real world data sources. And there is no native way for them to kind of have trustable and reliable real world data sources. And the other the other Oracle problem, um, which is less well known, but we think is uh, insanely important, is the real world asset Oracle problem. So smart contracts can't trust or facilitate real world asset exchange. And what we've seen is that uh, multiple projects uh, successfully tackled the real world data problem. Most notably, uh, Chainlink providing uh, an Oracle network that allows smart contracts um, to have a reliable and trustable data source for their applications. But we haven't seen a practical solution for the decentralized exchange of real world assets. So previous approaches around this were like um, kind of solutions that are heavy on arbitration protocols. So basically human courts that, um, that kind of govern the transactions between buyer and seller. What we're doing at Boson Protocol is we're solving this, this um, real world asset Oracle problem by building decentralized exchange and payment systems for the exchange of digital value for physical goods. So we execute real world commerce transactions using smart contracts um, and an escrow based system uh, running, running with uh, some game theory primitives and um, using kind of NFTs to tokenize transactions. So fundamentally, um, we're solving the trust problem between buyer and seller. If you're exchanging a physical good online today, basically e-commerce, you uh, the trust between buyer and seller is facilitated through some uh, centralized intermediary, either uh, either an e-commerce platform or a payment provider. What we are enabling is kind of automated um, automated exchange and trust provision through smart contracts without the reliance on a centralized intermediary. Um, so. How we do that is we introduce kind of two primitives, um, two kind of core components to achieve this. One is we tokenize kind of tokenize commitments to to uh, exchange physical goods for digital value using NFTs, and the second one being we have an escrow system based on game theory and actions of buyer and seller that uh, determines the outcome of um, of funds distribution. So what you see here is a visualization of the life cycle of what we call an NFT voucher or a commitment NFT throughout an exchange between a buyer and a seller. This is quite interesting because um, previous approaches are very heavy on tokenizing real world assets themselves. What we do here is we, we tokenize a commitment, basically a promise to exchange a real world good. I'm just going to uh, br briefly talk you through the flow of such a, such an NFT voucher. It's basically that as a seller, if you want to offer an item, you kind of um, fill out the offer with the payment amount, with the amount of buyer deposit, the amount of seller deposit, and kind of specify the item. Then if you basically click offer, um, a voucher set gets minted that uh, represents those offers. And as you mint those vouchers, you put down a seller deposit. This is uh, to incentivize honest behavior, and I will come back to that later. Then as a buyer, if you want to take up um, a, a seller on their offer for a physical good, you commit to that voucher, meaning you put down uh, the payment amount for the product 
and a buyer deposit. All these funds are held in the Boson Protocol escrow. And then you receive an NFT voucher. What is great about that is whoever holds the NFT voucher is able to redeem it for the real, um, for the promised physical good. So um, as long as a buyer, as you hold that NFT voucher, you can go into the store, uh, redeem that promise for the real asset. You could also kind of resell that voucher to the next person, and then they could go into the store and redeem that. So we enable kind of NFTs, promise NFTs flowing around um, a decentralized commerce economy, basically. So the first primitive being tokenizing uh, promises to transact and exchange real world goods. The second one is our escrow mechanism based on a game theory heavy approach, which you see here, that governs the exchange between buyer and seller and holds the funds um, until the exchange is complete. So what you have here, not to be confused, it's kind of a large game tree, is that um, the funds are locked into escrow, what I previously said at this stage, um, the seller put down their deposit, buyer put down a deposit, buyer put down a payment amount. And then based on the actions of buyer and seller, these funds get distributed in, in the end. Um, what's interesting about this mechanism that you see here is that we wanted to concentrate and focus on enabling a few key properties. The first one being it's only an exchange between buyer and seller. So there is no third party involvement, no third party human arbitrator. It's just an escrow contract that gets executed based on the actions of buyer and seller. The second one being atomicity. So with this, we make sure that um, either the buyer receives the item and the seller receives the payment, or the buyer doesn't receive the item and they receive their money back. This is what we do through a redemption transaction. So a buyer basically signing for that they receive the good. And the first one is we incentivize the third one is we incentivize both parties to behave honestly. So <clears throat> this is why we have a buyer deposit and a seller deposit. So if kind of players deviate, deviate from their promise, um, they will get punished. So this kind of minimal protocol is already built. We've uh, recently deployed it to Ringby Test Network. And there is a reference application called that tonight which is a developer tool showing how to implement a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace um, where buyer and seller can transact without any third-party involvement. So this is open to the public. You can go to leptonite.io, play around with it, um, find out how the escrow system works, and so on. I also um, brought this kind of uh, what we call the game mode. It's kind of a simulation of a sample transaction. And uh, just what's interesting here is the game theory behind this exchange can get pretty can get pretty extensive, but we can abstract these functionalities away for the end users. So, for instance, you see here a buyer screen, and they just committed to the voucher, and it's pretty straightforward. They see all the funds are in escrow, and uh, they can either refund their purchase or uh, redeem it for the real world good. So I just ran you through uh, the core protocol version 0 0.1. Again, this is a minimal version based on the white paper specifications. And what we're building now is the version one, which enables metaverse commerce. So we're adding some minor functionality to allow for this use case where you buy in game and then basically collect it in the real world. Longer term, what we're working on is the generic exchange mechanism. So the generic exchange mechanism is basically this vision of uh, Boson Protocol becoming the decentralized exchange for anything. So any kind of good, be it physical, digital, or on-chain. What is great about that is um, once you have kind of all different um, product types uh, that are abstract, going through one exchange mechanism, you can blur the lines between exchanging physical and digital things. And I think especially kind of for for this NFT conference, um, this idea of uh, digital items. So um, if you buy, let's say, uh, some fashion item, you will receive the digital identity, which will give you the in-game skin, right? So this will all be really straightforward with the generic exchange mechanism. And to our growth strategy. So what we're doing uh, 
what we're doing is facilitating a transaction between buyer and seller using uh, using smart contracts and game theory. But this is kind of uh, a really important, like a core part of uh, unbundling e-commerce and building kind of decentralized commerce that is open and accessible to anyone. But there is so much more services needed to unbundle e-commerce. So what we think is great in building on Web3 infrastructure is that you have all these plug and play components. So basically we can allow for seller credit using something like Aave. We can use something like Proof of Humanity to enable identity and so on. But we still face the challenge of e-commerce, centralized e-commerce uh, platforms being kind of quite seamless for end users today. Just because of their centralized nature, their returns to scale, their network effects, it's kind of hard to build a better experience and more efficient experience than uh, something like Amazon. So to drive initial adoption of Boson protocol and decentralized commerce to jump the curve, we're looking to build kind of great experiences and use case use cases that we uniquely enable and that e-commerce platforms can't just can't simply enable. So um, we see the, the the major one there being metaverse commerce and uh, Holly is gonna tell you more about that. Great, thank you Jonas. Assuming everyone can still hear me, I will dive into metaverse commerce and then I will unveil some exciting news about Boson's plans for taking this forward. So here, and you may have seen this demo already, I've, I've done this before, you can find it on our YouTube channel for the full version. This is an in-game retail store. Um, we built this demo with our partner Crucible, and Crucible are pioneering this avatar layer that you see here, the avatar being the white figure. So the store that Crucible has built in the demo environment is a set of modular components that can be dropped into a game at engine level to allow avatars to enter the metaverse and have a branded shopping experience in world. So you can imagine the same sort of technology could be replicated across multiple engines and metaverses for all sorts of branded items, events and other experiences. As the player, um, the player can walk around the store and check out different items of clothing, much like they would in real life. And when something, something is purchased, like this jacket that you see on the mannequin here, what the player is doing is actually purchasing a commitment token, one of the um, voucher promises that Jonas has explained already. And Boson Protocol's escrow mechanism handles the buyer and seller deposits as well as the payment amount. So having purchased the jacket, the player can see all of their commitment NFTs, commitment tokens for different items. And for the purposes of this demo, when they want to redeem one, they can go to the relevant collection point where they will then hand, the store uh, clerk will then hand over the physical item for the, the buyer, the player, to inspect it. And when they're happy that the item is as expected, they can hit um, confirm for their redemption of that physical good. At which point the merchant is notified of payment being transferred to them and the transaction of that physical item is completed. After that, in this slide, you can see that after a predefined wait period, the deposits are returned to the buyer and the seller from the boson escrow. And the buyer is notified on their mobile device that their deposit has been returned. So where are we going with this? We've talked already about boson protocol's core mechanism, and we've seen a demo of commerce in the metaverse. The very fact that we're here today is, of course, because of the recent surge of interest in NFTs and the huge potential to use them in new ways. And of course, you may have noticed some huge names moving into virtual spaces. So our question for brands is, what if your items were put up for sale in the metaverse? 
Boson Protocol has partnered with Decentraland, the first fully decentralized world controlled by a DAO. And we have acquired a huge piece of virtual real estate to meet this growing demand from brands to launch physical products in a new way. So I'm so excited today to introduce Portal to everybody, the new home of Metaverse Commerce brought to you by Boson Protocol. Our space in Decentraland offers a way for all kinds of brands across both Web3 and Web2 to bridge this digital uh, and physical realms in a new kind of experimental way through virtual retail stores and experiences. We're going to do all of this in a transparent way, becoming progressively more decentralized and all of our code will be open sourced so that ultimately Boson Protocol can be adopted by many online spaces, games, communities, and other kinds of platforms. And we're building all of this in a modular way because ultimately Boson Protocol plans to be the go-to digital to physical bridge for every virtual world and game and be that DEX for anything. So now, Brands can come to Boson Protocol, come and talk to us about launching premium experiences in our Decentraland space. We're in Vegas City on the main strip between the gaming and festival zones. And that's a rapidly growing virtual world with an already engaged user base that's perfect to test out the new kind of revenue stream that this kind of mechanism can provide. And we can get creative. We're not limited to the regular purchase experience that you can get in a real world store. We think of Portal as a virtual lifestyle, commerce and cultural playground that's open to everybody. So both on Portal enables brands to create amazing user experiences for this kind of NFT based commerce out of the box, that's through our modular setup that we're going to share in an open sourced way. Brands will be able to easily experiment with emerging shopping trends in virtual worlds, and that will create media friendly, innovative retail promotions to drive reach, probably to new audience as well, if you think about the kinds of users that are already engaged in Web3 in particular. And of course, that will enable brands to use this new kind of cutting edge marketing innovation opportunity. So come and talk to us about launching a branded experience in the metaverse. And we welcome contributions as well. There are paid ways to contribute through our $5 million grants program. There's an ambassador program too. You can read about that on Medium. You can join our Discord to find out more about ways to get involved in token engineering. You can, if you're really super keen, go on our GitHub directly and contribute that way. And of course, you can get in touch with us to have a general chat if you would like to. Um, you can email us at info at bosonprotocol.io. We're on Twitter. Jonas and I are on Twitter as well. And we have Telegram and as I've mentioned, Discord. So thank you very much for watching today. Um, yeah, that's it for me. Thanks so much, Holly. Um, I, I was wondering, could you share again the link for that was on the card um, for people who would like to apply for the grant? Absolutely. I've just dropped the link to our Medium post in the general chat. Can everybody see that? Yeah, very exciting stuff. Um, thanks so much to Holly and Jonas uh, and Boson Protocol for helping us today. We really, really appreciate it. Thanks so much, Luke. Thanks um, for having us.